Day. Happy So What Day. Happy Day After Christmas. I hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas day and that it was everything that you hoped for. Um, I am getting into the spirit of New Year's Eve. As you can tell, I'm trying out my look for our New Year's Eve sew-along that's coming up. But before I get to that, I want to extend to you all our fantastic after Christmas sale at sulky.com. We are offering you 30% off of a $50 purchase, and this expires on January 2nd, so get it while the getting's good, and you have to use the coupon code AFTER30 at checkout in order to get this great deal. So I'm going to leave this on the screen for most of today's So What so that you can be sure to take advantage of this great deal. If anything that I'm talking about today strikes your fancy and you'd like to add it to your cart, be sure to add that coupon code at checkout so that you can get that great deal. All right. Also, everything I'm going to be talking about today is in the description of today's post. So if you're looking for a link, if you're looking for a tutorial, if you want to head on over to the blog to get some instructions for what I'm talking about today, you can easily grab those links and just click on over once our live stream ends here. And all of those links will take you everywhere you need to go. So if you're not seeing the entire description for today's post, be sure to hit that little see more button or show me more or more and the whole description will pop out and you'll find all of those links. Most importantly, the link to sign up for our New Year's Eve sew along. I know I've been talking about this so, so much, but it's happening in only five days. So be sure that you've registered because as long as you're registered, you will get your free Veronica pattern, which is the name of this great bag design by Sally Tomato. That is valued at $9.99 and comes free with the event. Also included is an exclusive design collection from Parker on the Porch to create really cute 80s themed snap tabs, charms, and flat designs if you want to embroider on the bag itself. So make sure that you are registered because then my entire look today is going to make so much more sense to you. I am vibing on the totally 80s theme, got my side ponytail, got my bright pink lipstick, and I have my off shoulder top. So I'm just kind of, um, I don't know, auditioning this for you all. We'll see what my look <laughs> um, transforms into or morphs from <laughs> in about five days. Now, you certainly don't have to dress up to join in the fun on New Year's Eve, but Jessica Barrera from Sally Tomato and I, we like to get in the spirit of the theme. So a couple of years ago, we had a pajama party and we wore our favorite pajamas and I uh, also wore a robe. It gets kind of chilly down here in my sewing space. So that was great for me for the day. And I did a tutorial before the event for how to embroider on robes of all kinds, whether that's a plushy robe or a knit robe. I gave both tutorials to you, and then I wore the robe on New Year's Eve. So this year, I thought I would get into that 80s spirit and show you how to create an off-shoulder top. Now, this tutorial is also great for if you have a regular t-shirt and it feels really stifling to you and you hate that collar. I hate that about t-shirts. This is a way to remove that neckband and have a little more room to groove in your t-shirts, especially men's t-shirts, t-shirts that are cut for figures that are not lumpy and bumpy like the figures of a lady can be. Um, we're going to make those t-shirts a little bit more flattering. So whether you want an off shoulder top or you want something that's just gives you a little bit more room, you can use the same tutorial that I'm going to go over today. The great thing about working with a t-shirt is that we can leave these great raw edges. We don't have to finish any of these edges and we can create some unique details 
as well that gives our shirt a little bit of an edge. So whether you want to get fully in the spirit like I am today, or whether you just want to watch and sew along with us on New Year's Eve, that is entirely up to you. But regardless, make sure you are registered, make sure you have your pattern downloaded, print it out if you want to, or you can refer to it on your computer screen or your tablet screen or even on your phone if you're able to read the pattern directions on your phone. I would need a magnifying glass probably at this point in my life, but you know, whichever way you would like to refer to your pattern. We will take you through this pattern step by step, but it might be handy for you to also have the instructions nearby. You can kind of cross things off if you want to, if you've printed out the pattern, and then you can kind of follow along a little bit easier as we work through the bag on New Year's Eve. You will also need to download your embroidery design files and choose the one that you want to use on New Year's Eve. I'm gonna be taking you through all three styles. So I will show you how to prepare your bag for the flat fill design. If you would like embroidery to be directly on the bag, I'll also take you through the snap tab project and I will also take you through the charm project. All of these designs are generously provided by Parker on the Porch. Check them out at parkeronthe.porch.com. And this design collection is valued at over $20. I think it's $21.94 or something like that. So with purchase of the event, you will get the four hour live stream showing you every single process of all the designs and the project construction. You will also get that $9.99 Veronica pattern for free, and you will also get over $20 in embroidery designs from Parker on the Porch, all included with your event. So be sure to sign up and save your spot. You will get notified before we go live. We're gonna start off the afternoon of New Year's Eve at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That's 12 noon. Eastern time. So I'm mountain time, so I will be joining you at 10 a.m. So just take into account where you live, what your time zone is, so that you can join us on time. Also, once you register, you can add the event to your calendar. And whether you have a Google calendar, Yahoo, etc., there's a couple of different uh, versions. You can add that to your calendar and it will automatically populate in your time zone. So that's a great little feature as well. You don't have to remember all of these numbers. Um, and we will be sending you some reminders so that you can join us live, if you wish, on New Year's Eve in the afternoon. Now, if you're busy on New Year's Eve, totally get it, but you still wanna participate, don't worry, because as we are live streaming, the event is being recorded as well. And after the live stream ends, that recording will live on the event page. So you can go onto that event page, watch the event in its entirety, pause, rewind, fast forward, take your time going through the projects, and you can have a totally self-led class um, with Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato and myself. So... Lots of different options. Also, once you register, you will have access to our New Year's Eve Sew Along Checklist. I highly suggest you refer to this. Make sure that you have all the other tools on hand for the project. For example, there's a screwdriver involved. If you wanna add the Chicago screws that are on the bag, you will need a screwdriver and there's nothing worse than getting to that point in the tutorial and realizing you forgot to get a screwdriver. I was able to find mine in my serger toolkit that came with my serger. Thankfully, there was a flathead screwdriver in there. And so I was able to put mine next to my sewing machine and I'm ready to go in about five days time. Uh, you might also have a little screwdriver that came with your sewing machine. That should work just fine. Or you could use a regular sc screwdriver from a tool kit. You'll also need a hammer if you're going to be working with the snap tabs. And you're going to need a snap setter for our line 20 snaps that are used to snap our little snap tab shut. 
All right, so you need those specific tools if you're gonna work with the snap tab design and those Chicago screws. But there's some other things that you might also find helpful um, aside from your full kit. And if you didn't grab up a kit and you're gonna be using your own fabric, this is definitely a must that you check over your checklist, make sure everything is on hand, your pieces are cut, your design is ready to stitch out, and you're ready to go. All right, a number of you are saying, I have been signed up for the longest time, can't wait. I know I've been talking about it for a long time, but um, it's so exciting and I just love this event every year. And you know what? I would much rather spend my New Year's Eve sewing with, you know, like-minded people such as yourself rather than, you know, watching somebody, you know, dancing on TV until midnight. I may still do that. We'll see. I don't know. It's the thing to do, right? But at any rate, we will be joining each other at noon. So we've got plenty of time to go out on New Year's Eve night or to watch some other programming or to go to sleep early, quite frankly. So it's up to you what you want to do with the rest of your night. You can even spend some more time making some more snap tabs or charms or finishing up your bag as well. So there's plenty of time to make something new. And on New Year's Day, we will already have a project completed. And that's just going to start off our new year just right. All right. So I thought we would get in the spirit and talk about some attire that is definitely a throwback to the 80s. I mean, am I giving you the 80s vibe today or what? <laughs> My kids actually think I look pretty cool today, which, hey, I'll take it, right? I'll take it when I can get it. Um, I will say they like to rock a side pony, and I grabbed this scrunchie from their room. So the 80s is all coming back into the fold, has been for a while, so we thought it would be a fun theme to kind of explore for this event. Um, scrunchies are super easy to sew. Back in the day, I mean, I think a scrunchie was one of the first things I wanted to sew. Um, you know, I had done some mini sewing lessons here and there, made some things I didn't really want to make just to kind of learn how to sew. And when scrunchies were the thing in the 80s, I definitely wanted scrunchies to match my outfits. And it was so easy to sew them. All you need is a little bit of fabric, a little bit of elastic, a sewing machine, some thread. I mean, it couldn't be simpler. So I'm going to show you just a little video that we have on our Sulky YouTube channel, and it goes over how to sew a scrunchie really simply and easily. It's a relatively short video because quite honestly, you can sew a scrunchie in five minutes. So all of you watching here today can sew your own scrunchie and wear it on New Year's Eve if you so choose. Uh, you can also wear it on your wrist, which is a trendy thing to do nowadays. We would have never done that when I was growing up. But hey, people wear hair ties on their wrists all the time so that they're ready to go. They could pull back their hair whenever they need to. So it's also a fashion statement as an accessory, we'll say. These also make really great gifts as well um, for, you know, Valentine's Day coming up, birthdays, all kinds of things. Scrunchies are just really fun and a great way to teach somebody else how to sew, um, especially somebody in elementary school, in even high schoolers are wearing the scrunchies, um, and you only need a small amount of fabric. So this tutorial shows you how to work with knit fabric and how to kind of tame that stretch at the sewing machine, but you can certainly make a scrunchie out of a woven fabric as well because it's gathered around a piece of elastic, so it doesn't necessarily need to stretch the elastic is going to be doing the stretching for you. So I'm going to show you this video. I'll kind of narrate as we go along and hopefully you will be inspired to rock your own side pony and wear your scrunchie on New Year's Eve. All right, so this is just our little sulky intro. So you would see this on our YouTube channel. And we do have a technique library with a number of basic videos like this. So first things first, we're gonna find some fun pom-pom trim. 
you know how I love some pom-pom trim. This is going to dress up our scrunchie a little bit more than just being a basic knit scrunchie. And I'm going to pause because it's going a little bit faster than I can even narrate. But along with our fun pom-pom trim, we're going to find some knit fabric. As I mentioned, you could also use a woven fabric. And you're going to cut it about four inches wide by about, I think it said 22 inches or so. That seems long enough to me to gather it nicely around the elastic. Now, to tame the stretch of the fabric so that it's not stretching as we sew, one of the tricks I like to do is use sticky Fabrisolvi and cut it into narrow strips that will fit along the seam allowance. This way, when we are sewing our strip of fabric together, that seam allowance isn't going to stretch at all. We can sew a straight seam without, or you know, an, a a uh, a knit stretch stitch, uh, without worrying about our fabric uh, stretching while we sew it. Another alternative is to use a serger as well, but we're keeping this really simple and basic for maybe beginner sewers who want a quick, you know, an easy. Um, beginner project that they can complete in no time and have great success with. So if you are using your standard sewing machine, you can cut those sticky Fabra Solvi strips, apply them to the seam allowance, and you can put them on all four edges as well. So this stabilizer is water soluble and it also has a paper backing to it. So you'll see we're going to remove that paper backing so that we can sew it and then remove it with water once our uh, scrunchie is complete. So now we're going to pin that pom-pom trim between the fabric long edges and you can just fold it in half as you go making sure that you are pinning through all layers. And you can leave a little bit wider seam allowance than the trim tape edge. Some of these mini pom-pom trims have such narrow tape. And you're probably going to want a wider seam allowance than that. So just adjust the placement of your pom-pom trim or any trim you could use here. Or you could omit the trim altogether as well. Then you're going to trim up the end so that it doesn't go into that seam allowance along the short edge. So make sure that you are tucking that in or trimming that. Then you'll thread your machine with sulky 50 weight cotton thread, install a zipper foot so that you can sew close to the trim edge, and then you're just gonna stitch that long edge. You wanna use a stretch stitch here which is a long, narrow zigzag stitch. Then once you have that tube sewn, you can use a bodkin or tweezers or a safety pin or even our multi-purpose sulky turning tool. And you're going to turn that long tube right side out. And here's where you can double check and make sure that you've caught the edge of your pom-pom trim with your stitching. And if you haven't, you can turn it to the wrong side again and stitch along the edge to make sure that you've caught um, all of that trim edge in your stitches. So we'll turn that right side out. There's our cute little trim. And then we need to insert our elastic. So again, she's using a bodkin here to insert that elastic. You can use a safety pin and just pin it to the edge of the elastic and feed it through your long fabric tube. Just make sure that you don't pull it all the way through. So you want to hold on to the end of the elastic so it doesn't get lost in the tube. She is pinning that elastic ed end to the fabric tube end so that it doesn't go anywhere. That's another great tip as well. All right, so now it's time to join those two elastic ends. So you just overlap them and sew a few zigzag stitches. You can sew a little box, but it's a relatively uh, 
narrow piece of elastic that she's using. Um, that's just a little bit more comfortable to wear in your hair. I would say about a quarter inch elastic. So it's kind of hard to sew a little box in that area. So you can just zigzag a couple of times over that join. Then we're gonna fold one end of our fabric tube about a half an inch to the wrong side so that you have that finished end. And notice there's no trim in that fold. So we don't have that extra bulk of the trim interfering with this part of the seam. And then you'll insert the opposite fabric end into the tube so that your fold is over the top, so that all of our raw ends are concealed and our trim looks like it's matching up along that edge. Now we will just stitch along that overlap and you can just stitch it on your sewing machine using that same stitch you used earlier. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of the seam. And you also wanna make sure at this point that your elastic is not twisted so that you're stitching over the flat elastic. And then you just kind of give it a stretch and the gathers distribute themselves evenly across the elastic. And it is really just that simple. We have the full tutorial for that scrunchie on our blog as well at blog.sulky.com. I link directly to that blog post in the description of today's post. So if you want exact dimensions and all the colored photography so you can walk your way through making a scrunchie, you can certainly uh, easily refer to that blog post and get all the instructions that you need. All right, so in addition to the scrunchie, I'm gonna show you how to make this uh, one shoulder top or off the shoulder top. But again, as I mentioned previously, you don't have to cut all the way so that it's off your shoulder. You could just cut off the neckline of your top, give it a little bit of a stretch, and this gives you a little bit more breathing room for all those great graphic tees and maybe even men's t-shirts that you love to wear but you feel so stifled in. This is a great tutorial for that as well, for just kind of making your t-shirts a little bit more comfortable to wear. So if you don't wanna necessarily rock, you know, the off shoulder look, um, I don't know if it's right for me even, but you know, I'm going with it. <laughs> you can still use this tutorial to just make your t-shirts a little bit more comfortable. So first off, you're gonna find the t-shirt that you love and you're gonna mark along the center front, just along that neckband. All right, so find the center. Um, you can fold your shirt in half and match the shoulder seams to find the center point but I actually like to measure, uh, use my flat cl uh, clear ruler and measure from one lower edge of the neckline on while the shirt is facing up to the other. And then I use that measurement to find the center front because as you know, t-shirts are manufactured and made in so many places and so many times the neckband is actually a little bit off. I know, it's shocking. <laughs> So that's, for me, a little bit better way to find the, the real center front of the t-shirt. And then I'll just mark that with a little piece of chalk or a removable fabric marker. Then we're gonna mark two inches down from that lower edge neckline seam across the shoulder seam on both sides of the shirt, okay? Then we're gonna mark down from our center front line about one to one and a half inches down from center front. Then we're going, going to uh, draw a curved line to that marking we made along the shoulder seam to just kind of curve it a little bit. And you wanna do the same thing for the other side of the shirt as well. If you want it to match up entirely, you can wait until we've cut this side of the shirt and then fold over the front and cut along the same line. That way it'll look exactly the same on either side. So you can do it either way. You can mark both sides to center and then you have your cutting line on the shirt front 
or you can mark just one side and then after we cut the one side, we'll fold it over and you can mimic that line on the other side. Everybody with me? All right. So as I mentioned, this is the marking for only the shirt front. You only want to cut through that line on the front of the shirt. So we're gonna slice down in front of the shoulder seam, just in front of it. You can see those manufactured serger stitches are still intact on that shoulder seam. And we're just going to cut the front of the shirt along that line. If you have a motif on the shirt that is going into that line, you can just adjust your measurements a little bit to cut off a little bit less so that you don't interfere with the motif or you can cut off that part of the motif. It's really, you know, not that serious, especially if you're using a well-loved shirt or, you know, a shirt you've had for quite some time that you just kind of want to breathe new life into. Sometimes the motif is kind of secondary to just having another t-shirt that you can wear in a little bit more stylish way. All right, so once we have cut the front of the shirt, oh, someone is asking, what if we don't want the off the shoulder look. Thank you for that. So if you don't want the off shoulder look, instead of measuring two inches down from that neck band, uh, neck band lower edge, you can just measure about a half inch down from the neck band lower edge and then cut almost across the neckline from that shoulder, uh, that shoulder half inch mark to the other shoulder half inch mark. It'll be almost straight. Okay, but it'll have a little bit of curve to it because you want to follow the neck band curve along the center front. Or you could simply just cut off the neck band um, and follow it along the front of the shirt and along the back of the shirt. Don't do it all in one fell swoop because the back of the shirt, the neck band is generally up a little bit higher. And that's for good reason, actually. That's giving you a little bit of shape. Um, if you cut it as one all together, then your neck um, is going to be much more open than you want it to be, especially if you're doing this off shoulder look. So we're only cutting the shirt front and then we're going to cut the shirt back. But first, we're going to make some other markings just to make sure we don't go too crazy with it. So I take my chalk pencil and I go for my cut edge along the shoulder almost straight across to the other cut edge of the opposite shoulder. And notice how I'm just curving ever so slightly so that I go just under that neckband seam so that I'm cutting it off, but I still have a little bit of curve to my shirt, but it's very, very slight. I'm almost cutting in a straight line. All right, so after we cut along that line on the shirt back, you can leave it as is, but I like to kind of echo that raw edge look. So I'm also gonna cut off the hem of my shirt. Now you can do this any number of ways. You might have a shirt that's super long. Maybe it's a men's style shirt and you know you always have to tuck it in and it's irritating or it's just a super long shirt. Now is your time to shorten it up. And you can come up three inches from the hem if you want. Just be sure to try on the shirt and pin where you wanna cut it so that you have a guideline, then remove the shirt, and then you can draw a straight line along that guideline from the side seam to the side seam. I also suggest you do the front and the back as a separate cut. Um, this way also, if you want a little bit more coverage along the back, but maybe you want the shirt to hit at you know your uh, waistline in the front, you can cut along the front and then just kind of curve it along the back and you have a little almost shirt tail hem along the back. I just cut just underneath the factory cover stitch on the hem of my shirt. That way, the bottom edge had a little bit of finish to it, and it had extra layers from the folded edge of the hem. So I just cut all across the entire hem, going all the way around, um, as opposed to cutting through all layers. I went all the way around, um, about a quarter inch to an eighth of an inch away from the second line of stitching from the cover stitch edge. 
and I did the same thing along the um, sleeve edge as well. So I have this cute little edge. See how there's a couple different layers? That's because the hem is still attached, but it has this raw edge look. And I can curl the layers a little bit going in different directions even to give it a little bit more of like that edgy detail. All right, so speaking of kind of curling the edges, when you're done with all of that cutting, all you need to do is kind of stretch along the edges and your fabric will curl to the right side. And that's really all the finishing that you need because this fabric is not going to fray. So we don't have to stitch along it at all. So now we have our cut up repurposed top and super easy, much more flattering than that, you know, stifling, uh, um, you know, men's cut of shirt and uh, much more easy to wear. And it just has a little bit of stylish edge to it. Now, I kind of took this a little bit further and I decided to add some machine embroidery <laughs> because with our New Year's Eve event, we are getting this great design collection. And you might have decided that you're going to create a snap tab for our New Year's Eve event, but you have this entire collection of designs that you will be able to use in so many different ways. So I thought I would take one of the flat fill designs and stitch it onto the shirt. And this way, if your shirt doesn't have a motif, you can easily add one that kind of mimics that 80s vibe that you're giving with your flash dance style t-shirt. You can add the lightning bolt, you can add the mixtape or the cute little skate, roller skate. Um, so you have some options. So I'm gonna go through the tutorial of how to embroider the t-shirt as well. Now, I didn't really want to compete with the motif I already had existing on my shirt. So I actually added the embroidery on the back of my shirt along the lower edge hem. So when you see me from behind, I have a little bit of a detail of that lightning bolt on the back of my shirt. So just another idea, you can embroider it wherever you want. So for embroidery on t-shirts, we always recommend, oops, I want to make sure that I get this coupon code up on the screen for the rest of today's um, uh, show. And now my light went off. Everything's happening. I'll just leave it off. It's fine. Um, uh, I've lost my train of thought. Oh, the coupon. Yes, I forgot to put it back on the screen. I apologize. But our after Christmas sale is here. We have 30% off of a $50 purchase at sulky.com. You have to use the code AFTER30 at checkout in order to get that great deal. So make sure that you, um, if you're seeing anything um, that I'm talking about today that you want to add to your cart at sulky.com, just don't forget the coupon code. All right, so embroidery on t-shirts. I always recommend using Sulky Soft and Sheer Stabilizer for embroidering on t-shirts. It is exactly what it says. It is soft and it is sheer, but it's really supportive, especially for uh, knits. When you're embroidering a knit fabric, you wanna use a cutaway stabilizer rather than a wash away or a tear away because you need something to hold on to all of that thread. You need, it's actually the other way around. The thread needs something to hold on to, right? Because our knits are stretchy. So think about it. If you put a design that has a lot of fill stitches, which is what our lightning bolt design has, and you go to stretch it, the design is going to get wonky. It's going to look puckered once it stretches. And it's just not going to look very professional. When you add the soft and sheer, which is a cutaway permanent stabilizer, it stays with the design forever and ever. It washes with the shirt. It retains its soft hand. Um, it doesn't add too much sort of thread count to your t-shirt. You will still be able to stretch your shirt beyond the design perimeter because we're not using a fusible permanent stabilizer. We're just using a permanent stabilizer, all right? So that's why 
I'm going to uh, recommend Soft and Sheer when you are embroidering t-shirts, t-shirt knits, t-shirt quilts, okay? So I am only hooping my Soft and Sheer stabilizer. I'm not hooping my shirt. I have hooped shirts in the past and it can work, okay? But you have to be very careful and potentially use a fusible stabilizer instead. Because what happens when you're hooping the fabric is along that outer hoop edge, once you press that inner hoop into place, it can stretch those knit fibers right around the hoop and separate them ever so slightly. Everything will look great while you're embroidering it. And then you go to pop out the hoop when your embroidery is done and all of a sudden it's puckered. That's because the fibers around the hoop got stretched when you hooped it and now they wanna go back to where they came from, okay? So even if you've stabilized it adequately, the hooping process can also cause problems with knits. So for this particular demo or project, I did hoopless embroidery where I add the t-shirt after I have already hooped the stabilizer. So the t-shirt attaches to the stabilizer and the hoop really is only holding the stabilizer in place. I also recommend this for things like onesies, for parts of the shirt where you can't hoop because the back of the shirt would probably interfere and get in the way of the stitching path. So in general, no hooping on the t-shirt. So now we're gonna decide where we want this design to go. And as I mentioned, I'm placing the lightning bolt design on the lower edge, uh, left side of the shirt on the back. So what I did was I printed out a template of my design, which shows my center cross marks so that I can use this as a placement aid. It also allows me to kind of audition the design in different parts on the shirt. So you can put it on the shirt front and let's say you're like, I'm just gonna center my shirt on the hoop, stitch it out. Well, then when you're all done, you wear the shirt and you have this design, front and center, right here in the center of your chest. Not always the most flattering uh, spot to add a design, just saying, especially if it's on the small side. Um, all right, so audition your design, figure out your design placement. If you can't print a template of your design, because generally you need to have software in order to be able to print a design template. If you can't do that, take the measurements of the design that are on the color sequence chart and uh, create a little template box using a piece of paper. That can be your template. It doesn't have to have the design on it, but having the dimensions, the outer dimensions of that box or square or what have you, will allow you to do your auditioning and get a scale of the design um, in the particular place that you think you want it, et cetera. All right, you can also just draw center cross marks where you think you want your design center to go and you can always erase those if you use you know, a chalk marker or what have you. If you have a placement tool that you love, like a placement sticker, um, or something like this, or maybe using a template grid that came with your embroidery machine. There's all kinds of placement aids out there. If you have one that you love that you do every single time, definitely do that. I will say though that this template, you will be able to reuse on New Year's Eve, because I'm gonna show you how to use this template when planning uh, the flat fill design on your bag. If you choose to embroider directly onto your bag, rather than making a snap tab or charm. So if you do embroider a t-shirt using the lightning bolt, the skate, or the mixtape design, save that template and we will use it in five days for our New Year's Eve sew along. All right, so we're gonna pin our template in place or do whatever placement aid you, you are most comfortable with. And once you have that in place, we are going to put that onto our hooped stabilizer. But first we are going to turn our shirt wrong side out so that we can access the front of our shirt and not have all of that extra fabric in the way. So turn your shirt to the wrong side 
and you're going to spray it with some KK2000 temporary spray adhesive and put it onto the stabilizer. So if you're using a template or if you have transferred your center cross marks onto the t-shirt fabric, use your inner hoop markings to line up your design uh, with the hoop. Another thing to think about is when you have that inner hoop inside of the outer hoop, make sure it's right side up. Make sure you can read the brand of the hoop and the size of the hoop correctly. If it's upside down, your hoop markings might not be in the right place. Okay, so I run into that problem with students all of the time. They don't realize that the center hoop cross markings in your hoops are not always in the center. And so they will center their fabric in the hoop rather than using those marks to center their fabric. Everybody with me? I have some people going, oh, okay. All right. Now that we have our fabric in place, just double check it against your template and then you can go ahead and remove your template or you can keep it in place until you have your hoop onto the machine and you can double check your needle placement with the center mark of your template just by using your little hand wheel to put the needle down or you might have a needle down function on your machine that you can also use to double check that your needle is sinking down into the fabric at the center point that you have marked. If not, you can use your machine screen functions or you can lift up the shirt and move it around until it's in the right spot. But placement really is key when you're embroidering anything that's ready made because we, you know, it, what's done is done on a ready-made shirt, right? There's really no going back. Um, so be very careful. Double check your placement a million times until you're absolutely sure that this is going to embroider where you want it to. Um, and as I mentioned, you might have some other placement tools that your machine offers you or that your embroidery software or other notions um, might help you out with. But um, I'm just trying to make it simple so everybody can follow along and understand placement is key. All right, so now we're just gonna embroider the design. And this design is really simple. I have bobbin thread in the bobbin. I have poly deco thread in the needle. I am using a, a universe, or excuse me, I'm using an embroidery needle, which has a little bit of a ballpoint to it. Great for knit fabrics. And this design only has one color stop. So bing, bang, boom. When this is done stitching, your embroidery design is finished. Now we can remove our hoop from the machine. We will remove the stabilizer from the hoop. And we are just going to trim away the stabilizer close to the edge of the stitching. But we do want to leave a little bit of a border so that that stabilizer stays intact and helps support those stitches. This is a pretty stitch dense design or stitch heavy, right? It's a fill design, which a lot of the times is not really recommended for knit fabrics because of the stretchability factor. But this one works in the way that we're doing it and in the way that the fill is stitched out. It's kind of a step fill. So can you tell by the wrong side, there's kind of like these rows of stitching, okay? So we're going to trim up our stabilizer oh, about an eighth of an inch or so away from the edge of our stitching line. And here's what mine looks like. I didn't get as close um, to some of the parts of the design. Totally fine because I'm going to be adding tender touch stabilizer to the wrong side of my t-shirt. Tender touch is a really silky, lightweight, fusible stabilizer that helps protect your skin from what might be some scratchy stitches. This is super helpful for onesies, anything babies or kids are going, going to wear, or even anybody going to wear something that you've embroidered. You never want something so scratchy against your skin. Um, even with the soft, you know, nice 
thread fibers that are sulky threads, um, it's still going to be can be irritating for people with sensitive skin. So Tender Touch is a stabilizer that we're actually adding after embroidery is complete. And it's really recommended to cut your stabilizer using pinking shears or a wavy blade, something like this. Um, it's really, it helps it adhere better and stick better for a longer period of time. Especially when you have that stretchability and you're stretching the shirt to get into it, to wear it, we don't want the tender touch to kind of want to peel away from the edges even after we have fused it. So we find here at Sulky that trimming it with pinking shears or a wavy blade helps that, uh, um, helps the adhesive just grab on to the shirt fibers better and stay longer. So that's why we recommend cutting it with that. So you just want to cut a little rectangle that's a little bit larger than the motif and definitely larger than the edges of the stabilizer that you just cut as well. Then we're going to use a low to medium temperature iron and fuse it gently to cover up the wrong side of our stitches, which also helps kind of seal them up so that they last longer and they have a better wear to them. And then we have that protective layer that is between our skin and our bobbin thread. So really, really great product. You'll find it in lots of ready to wear items, almost all ready to wear items that have been embroidered, you know, factory embroidered, this type of thing, you will find this type of stabilizer behind it. it has a really silky, nice feel to it. So if you do a lot of t-shirt embroidery, a lot of wearables, you'll want to grab up some tender touch, especially while you can use this 30% off coupon code. All right, and there's the finished embroidery. No puckering, no buckling around the design. It looks like it was stamped on there. It's a really professional end result. And I kind of like having this little detail on the back of my shirt. Um, it's almost like having a little signature tag almost. And it just kind of adds to the fun of the t-shirt style. And, you know, who, who doesn't want a little bit more embellishment in their life, right? So there you have it. I've got my 80s top. I've got my 80s hair, my 80s scrunchie my 80s lips. I even have my neon quilt behind me. So I think I'm ready to go when we come together in five short days for our 2023 New Year's Eve sew along, the event of the year. I can't wait to see you all there. And uh, as long as you're registered, you will get a few reminder emails so that you can join us on time when we begin at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That's noon for those of you on the East Coast. If you're not on the East Coast, double check your time zone, put it on your calendar so that you don't miss a minute. But don't worry, if you do happen to miss a minute, you can always go back and watch from the beginning. And you can also pause while we are doing the live event. So if we go a little bit too fast for you and you wanna stop the action, you can hit the little pause button and then when you're ready to rejoin, hit play again, and you should be along right there with us. So I really look forward to seeing you all in a few days for our sew along. I can't wait to see the bags that you will create. And uh, thanks for joining me here on our after Christmas So What episode. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and that you have a restful week ahead. And don't forget to prep your pattern pieces and grab up your embroidery design that you want to stitch along with me and Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato. We will see you on New Year's Eve and uh, I'll see you next week for another So What?